In this video, we will talk about eye gaze detector. This is another sensor to detect um, humans eye gaze uh, or uh, eye trackers, right. So, so how does eye, eye trackers work and how it is, how it is detecting or eye gaze? So please check this blog and um, in detail, right. So let me show the blog. Uh, again, the blog is from iMotions because I mentioned that iMotions is a company which integrates uh, different sensors and they created a core engine which combines the data from different sensors to provide you know um, uh, to provide you the combined one single uh, system so that you can do analysis better. So high gaze uh, is detected uh, using uh, detecting your eye uh, you know people and uh, the reflection of where the some, some light or some reflection happens right. That direction is used to pro say which direction you are looking at and your distance from the screen you know if you are watching a laptop that distance from the screen is used to say are you looking at the which place and uh, what are the location you are looking at and uh, that is how the eye trackers work. So read this blog uh, it is interesting and uh, the typical eye tracker um, in a portable eye tracker is this, this is a simple eye tracker you know Toby Eye is the company is the leader in uh, eye tracking devices. It is a typical eye tracker small device which can be attached to your laptop uh, you know laptop screen and uh, then you can start collecting the data. And uh, what happens uh, there is more and more other eye trackers like you can wearable eye trackers in the glass you can put those eye trackers. These are a bit old I will show the latest ones from Batobi eye. So what happens is the eye tracking data collects the, uh, the participants eye gaze data. These are the products by uh, Toby Eye. Uh, Toby is the company which is pioneer in this field and they make uh, eye trackers devices. The latest one is Toby uh, Pro glasses. Uh, there is no need to have extra you know extra some device or you have to focus on this everything is gone. Now based on this the new technology they are able to detect um, eye gaze even in the, you are interacting with the object you are looking at some product or something like that. And uh, this is the Toby Eye Pro, um, you know, uh, the, the research level eye tracker. Also something called Toby Eye Nano, this is a small and uh, that can be used for the research also. And uh, they are more devices, uh, you know. Um, the one uh, Toby Eye also had uh, one uh, device. Um, one device called uh, Toby Eye 4C. Uh, Toby Eye 4C is developed especially for the gaming purpose. Uh, it is very, very, very low cost in the sense it is uh, for the for the level of technology they use they do not get much. You know, Toby Eye 4C is around say $100 or uh, in India you can get in Amazon after import and everything you just get it for 13 to 15,000 rupees. So in a research it is really you know it is very really easy and you can collect say 10 eye trackers and you can collect data. But the purpose of Toby Eye 4 c is for gaming so you cannot use Toby Eye 4 c for research purpose that is the declaration says that you cannot copy data or analyze data from the 4 c. So yeah people do not use 4 c. If you are using 4 c talk to uh, Toby Eye company and get the license permission and then you have to pay huge money for getting license. So for research purpose, uh, they have to be a Pro, Pro Fusion or to be XR120 kind of um, devices, or to be a Nano is you know um, 60 uh, eye tracker that is really good and that not really costly. It might, might cost two to three lakhs, so that it's easy for you know people to start buying and making some research out of it. You know, do collect data and create some research proposal. So. Toby Eye uh, Eye Tracker so is talking about uh, collects data at a particular frequency. So let us see. Um, there are other eye trackers uh, uh, which is uh, not based on you know external device just based on the um, you know uh, webcam. Uh, commercial ones such as Toby Eye Sticky, uh, Toby Eye is also uh, you know giving uh, things called Sticky, it is webcam based detector anybody can use it. And other one is called real eye, uh, real eye is a very interesting one. Um, let us see what is real eye. So real eye is a screen based webcam eye tracking, you can give a try, uh, try it try it for free just um, launch demo 
and actually detects the you know the where the student is looking at based on uh, the emotions. And after that it gives the analysis of data, it is not just you know detection also. It is it's not much costly uh, compared to TOBI for the such purpose. But uh, there is a one more, um, it is from the Brown University, uh, it is called a web gazer, it is also free, it is open source, so use it. The challenge is uh, when you test all of them, you know, um, it needs a proper lighting. It is that the, the when students are interacting with a computer or laptop, its lighting should be in our face so that uh, we can detect the light from the screen and the pupil direction has to be detected to detect where, where on the screen the student is looking at it. And it is very sensitive, um, it is it's, you cannot detect you know if I look at a particular place if I am looking at a W it will, it will not be correct, no it is not so accurate uh, like a TOBI detectors uh, like the screen you know the external eye trackers. The reason is um, webcam is on top, uh, for example, if you are looking at a laptop, your webcam is on the top. If I am reading the you know bottom off of the page, my eyelids are kind of closed, I am reading, so the webcam may not be able to detect. So why I would say that go ahead and try realite.io or demo and uh, start looking at the you know bottom side of this page, you will see the accuracy is not so correct. But if you are conducting a research uh, where the area of interest is large, this web guess, webcam based eye trackers will be beneficial. The reason is uh, buying a you know, research grade eye tracker from TOBI and uh, conducting a study in a real classroom for 30 students is not possible even if you have a lot of money. So go when I say AOI, suppose this is my screen, um, the computer based learning on the screen and maybe this is the menu and there is a big picture and there is some text. In your research if your area of interest is very big such as you want to capture how much time a student spent on menu, how much time a student is looking at picture, how much time a student is looking at uh, text that is the thing. And by using this information you want to uh, you know understand students learning then this is perfect you know this uh, this webcam based detector might work for you. So check it out and not I would not suggest you to go for you know uh, real eye or uh, web guesser works pretty much same compared to real eye just how to uh, integrate it and collect data on it okay. And uh, the, the some of the feature extraction the analysis is not really tough it is easy I will show how to do that. So there are two, uh, you know, there are two features uh, key in a eye gaze detector. The one is called fixation. The other one is called socket. Fixation is uh, you are your eye is fixating on a particular uh, point, and uh, how much time you have to fixate, uh, and the, what is that point? You know, is it a single point or some some square bracket? It depends on your research question or the way you want to, you know, um, decide your uh, duration and the and the bracket. For example, um, if if I am fixating on this particular moment, no, this is the one part, you know. If I'm fixating on here, and uh, I would say anywhere my fixation, I'm looking at my eyes is looking at anywhere in this box for more than say um, 50 millisecond, or more than say 100 millisecond, I call it as a fixation. This is a fixation. So when you are reading something, actually you are fixating from point to point. So you fixate here, then you fixate here, then you fixate here, then you might fixate here, something like that. The moment between the fixation, right, is called saccade. So the transition between fixation is called saccade. That's the two key uh, features in the eye gaze detector. Okay. So. You get a raw data from you know I guess I directors. Uh, so raw data looks like this, you know, timestamp um, and the XY portions. Let me okay. So raw raw data looks like this, you know, just a timestamp and the XY portion. So what is XY portion? Um, for example. In your screen, uh, consider this is 0, 0. If a screen size is you know uh, 900 cross 600 or something, 
then this will be the 600, uh, 900, something like that. Uh, sorry, this is 900 or 600 because x is 900. So, something like that or uh, you can change where to start 0, 0 or how it works is basically uh, it takes a center. This is actually a 0, 0. From here it actually takes the coherent value and the eye tracker might give you the um, the values in this kind of uh, you know this kind of values 0, 0. You can convert it based on the way you want it. So, the raw data looks like this you know the timestamp the x portion y portion timestamp x portion y portion that is the exact raw data. If you want you know the orientation like your eye head movement also it can also can be added because it is a point of reference from where you are looking at it. So, also the important thing is sample rate. I mentioned in a, you know, you know uh, some slides above uh, that uh, there is a sample rate 60 hertz or 90 hertz. Uh, there are Tobii, uh, Tobii uh, Nano, it says 60 hertz. Uh, what is 60 hertz means they collect 60 samples per second, which means at every 15 milliseconds you will have x-ray portion, right. So, the eye guess is so accurate and uh, in a research, in a, you know in a reading kind of research, the sample rate is around 1300 hertz, that is, a, uh, that is the really recommended version. Um, high rate translation rate because are you looking at which word, are you looking at uh, you know uh, which letter such a kind of analysis. But I would say 90 hertz to 120 hertz or 60 hertz is better, do not you know go for a high end kind of sample rate. If you use a webcam based eye tracker that is the webcam based eye tracker, the sample rate will be 25 hertz right, it is not much. So, you have to make sure that is also issue there ok. So, I will say what is fixation and circuit, this is a picture from Wikimedia, the creative commons license. So, this person actually fixated on this particular location so here uh, first, then he fixated at the face, then he fixated here, then fixated here, fixated here, then fixated here, then um, oh, fixated at the first here is in 0 sorry not in the first place. So, this is how the fixation movement happened and the line 1, 2, 3, 4 indicates the, the sequence and this line is a saccade, you know um, that is a fixation. Also there is a uh, this kind of eye trackers give you other kind of information that is called heat map, heat map in the general meaning heat map that after you looked at, look at uh, this particular Wikimedia page after 5 minutes where you spend more time fixating. It is not talking about sequence or saccades instead it is giving where you focus more. This is the more focused area, more focused area, these are likely because this area were not actually looked at at all. So, this is really helpful uh, if you make advertisements or some marketing some product, where is the spot is spent, where is this customers are looking at. So, that is what very useful for uh, you know marketing areas. But we can use the site tracking data also for the learning analytics that is the whole idea of this ok. So, I said we can use high trackers for the learning analytics, so how can we use that for learning analytics. So, write down your answers um, after that uh, I will the video to continue. So, you can detect learners cognition whether they understood things or not or the reading skills or they focused attention engagement. Uh, the performance lot of things can be directed from the eye tracking data. I will show one example. So, in this paper uh, we predicting uh, uh, learning by analyzing eye gaze data of reading behavior uh, from EDM 2018 paper. Um, in this paper uh, they used a system called Betty's brain uh, open ended learning environment. What is Betty's brain? I will just give a very brief about Betty's brain. If you are interested go and check the page called Betty's brain from Vanderbilt University by Professor Gautam Biswas. Um, they have all those uh, Betty's brain system uh, in a web is there. Betty's brain as you know this is the agent Betty. The students uh, uh, role is to teach this particular agent to solve a particular problem ok this Betty. Initially Betty's brain is plain there is nothing in it ok. And you can ask your teacher there is a master uh, Mr. Davis you can ask him whether if you need any help of that. But your goal is to teach Betty go and do that. So, in order to teach you have to understand uh, some you know uh, climate change or uh, some science concepts. So, all the reading materials is given here and there is a um, you know there is a content a student has to read it and they can take notes and after taking notes or after reading it their goal is to go and create a concept map. 
uh, this space is called a Betty's brain initially it will be empty then you have to create a concept map this is a concept and this is in a relation between these two concepts the causal relationship and this increases decrease if deforestation increases vegetation will reduce decrease and uh, this marking red and all is you can mark it is not the system marking it right along you can tick mark it as a uh, correct or you can tick mark it as I do not know something like that. This marking is also based on you were you were you know uh, taking the quiz and based on the answers you can think of it. Then you can ask Betty after you create the map you can ask Betty to take an exam when the Betty takes exam uh, you can take exam on multiple sections or whole chapter or multiple subsections. And when the answers are correct, it's marked here. And if you select it, which particular path is used to uh, answer this particular uh, question is given here. So you know that these two uh, path is correct. So then you can mark them in a green mark. That's how the student marked here. So the idea is that a student is teaching Betty to do something. When the student is not able to do that, uh, it's not the student is failing. The Betty is failing. Okay, that's how the feeling goes, and the emotion is actually changed. So this is a Betty's brain, you know. In this system, um, we have uh, area of interest in each text. Okay, I'm just going to put the same title here because uh, it's going to be hiding it. So when a student is reading a particular line, when this it is reflected back to the earth, it is reabsorbed by the earth's surface and becomes absorbed uh, heat energy. So there are two concepts involved: heat reflected to back earth and uh, absorbed heat energy. Okay, there are two concepts and there is a relationship. If there is a more heat reflected back to earth, there will be more absorbed heat energy. Okay, that is how two concepts relations. Consider I am creating a, you know relationship between these two and uh, this heat reflected to earth and absorbed heat energy. If it increases, absorbed heat energy also will increase. This is a ca the, the causal relationship between these two concepts. So what I did, uh, I took the science uh, book and uh, I marked each and every sentence here in this whole uh, chapter like some 8, 7, 8 pages. I marked everything uh, mapped to a particular concept, particular concepts and particular cost relationships. There are only 25 in it. So I mapped it. Then I created a AOI. No, the, my AOI is not, uh, not, not very minute but not very, very big also. So far. my AOI is this. something like this or my O will be like this. So whenever a student is looking at this page and if the student looks at this particular AOI you know and if he converts his knowledge to concept map you know it, it makes the map correctly I would say that the student understood what he is reading. If the student spent a year still is not able to you know convert that into a you know correct causal relationship then the student did not understand here. So I using this data we created you know uh, a simple um, classifier and uh, we use the features from the eye gaze data like a fixation count, fixation count on the AOI, average fixation on that particular AOI and the uh, saccade angles, saccade amplitude kind of more uh, extended features from the fixation and saccade only. By using this uh, you know by using this uh, I guess features from the eye trackers on the exact AOI and the corresponding concept map or corresponding relation between two concepts, uh, we label them and uh, we try to predict the uh, students uh, ability to make the concept correct just by the I guess information. So I guess data and read actions and performance on subsequent edit action are used to label data to train the validate classifiers. This is a simple idea that uh, they we label data, we use trend fold class validation, train plus prediction and unlabeled data is given to uh, the learn classifier, the classified pages are read. Then uh, we used uh, to linear regression to model the, uh, the students uh, ability to classify the information whether they are able to pass it or they able to create a uh, concept map correctly or not just based on the IGAS data. And we got a good uh, accuracy say 80 percent but Kogan's capacity really good. Uh, it indicates that just by looking at uh, students fixation and psychots and particular AOI we can tell whether the student understood the concept or not at 80 percent accurately that is what this whole exercise is about. So what I am saying is if you use eye tracker webcam, webcam based eye tracker or any eye tracker and uh, you can actually predict uh, where the student is learning 
is the student learning is is he learning really learning is just simply reading is reading is converted to a knowledge or not these kind of information can be obtained and can be predicted easily using the eye trackers. So, yeah in this uh, slide we saw what is eye gaze detection and uh, why eye trackers is used in LA and I also give one example. In this week we saw that uh, I tried to motivate you there, there will be data not just from log data or the human observers. We can have a data about the students facial expressions, uh, data can be collected from different sensors like eye, ga eye, eye gaze detector or GSR other data and we can combine this data to provide you know complete model of the learner like holistic approach. The challenge in multimodal learning analytics is uh, combining data and uh, providing the useful information to students that is still a challenge and uh, a lot of people are working on that. And uh, I hope I motivated you on a field called uh, multimodal learning analytics. Uh, as I mentioned, this uh, is not a one a one week lecture. It's be, it needs almost you know half a semester course to teach multimodal learning analytics and uh, play with the data. So thank you. Uh, in the next week, uh, that's the final week. We will talk uh, not any topics like we'll talk about uh, next steps in learning analytics. Thank you.